Hi everybody, I'm Dilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to do an overview and take a first look at Klotzen Panzer Battles. Now this is a brand new game released by Maxim Games. It's a small indie development studio and this is their first game on Steam. Now you might be saying, what kind of game is Klotzen Panzer Battles? Well, if you're familiar with the old Panzer General series or Pacific General, perhaps you know Panzer Corps or Panzer Corps II, or even the Order of Battle series, this game fits into that niche. Now your immediately next question you're gonna ask is, well, how's it different from these games? And that's one of the things we're gonna take a look at as we kind of do an overview of this game and then start playing the first scenario in the German campaign. Now, all of these games have a campaign in them. In Klotzer Pans and Battles, you have 60 campaign scenarios that you can play. For the campaign, you can only play the Axis side, although you can play the Allied side in individual scenarios. Let's start out actually by just kind of showing up some of the kind of the features of this campaign tree. So we're going to click over here on the campaign tree. Now the, the game, the campaign starts in 1936 in Spain with kind of a tutorial-esque type of set of scenarios here. We can see a lot of different branches. And if you recall back with the original Panzer General, if you're familiar with that, playing the Axis campaign, you can end up in either Germany uh, fighting in Berlin at the end of the war, or you could end up fighting in the USA. So depending upon how you do in each scenario, your future uh, kind of fortunes would change and kind of get altered. This is very much the same way. You can end up in the USA or you can end up defending Berlin. You can lose the war. You can win the war by winning in the United States. You can see there's an Africa campaign. We've got Libya, Crusader, Gazala, Algeria, Sea Lion 41, Condor. So a lot of these famous operations are in here. We got Barbarossa 42. And a lot, if you do better than history, okay, well, I would say if you get kind of the major victory, it's going to open up a lot of different kinds of opportunities of hypothetical situa situations that were different than the war. So I'm really kind of enticed by the way they've set up this crane, uh, uh, campaign. I love the idea of a branching campaign. Here we can see the USA, win in the East, win in the West, year 1943 or less. So lots of options and events that get triggered by wins and losses, which is plenty exciting. Now let's jump in and take a look at the game. We're going to start a new game here and we're going to do the prelude, which is kind of the tutorial of it. Now in advanced settings here, we can tweak the game difficulty to whatever we would like. So we have a game difficulty here of five, AI strength of five, and AI difficulty of five. Now, I'm not sure quite yet what the different parameters mean, because over here on player two, we have game difficulty five as well. We're just gonna leave them at the default, the default right now. Now I know one of the things the developers talked about that they've spent a lot of time on the AI at the various levels. And at the lower levels, you might see the AI make kind of clumsy mistakes, but as you get higher up, it's gonna play better. We're gonna kind of take a look and see what it looks like here with the caveat that we're playing the introductory scenario. So I don't think we're gonna expect the AI to be probably set up very high for this scenario. Now, this prelude scenario, the very first scenario, is Toledo, July 28th, 1936. And the kind of the background to this, we can see here that we're fighting in Southern Spain. The background is after a couple of turbulent, turbulent years, Spain has dissolved into a civil war. Nationalist forces, with the, with, with the help of Germany and Italy, try to topple the Republican government in Madrid and take control of Spain. The preparation for what is about to become could have and could have a big, a big impact on the future war. There's your hint. So if we get a major victory, I think what happens is potentially you could have Spanish forces show up to help you in your campaign later. So getting off to a good start here, we would want to get that major victory so that we'll be able to kind of call on Spanish forces as we go forward. Now, the Spanish Civil War has begun and the front lines are barely seen as the whole country is in turmoil. Spanish nationalist forces with German help begin advancement on Madrid. So that's going to be our task is to take Madrid and Toledo in this game in 21 turns or less. And we'll see that as it comes forward. Now, one of the cool things about this game, I think if kind of get at that question of how is this different than Panzer General, Panzer Corps, the scope and scale of this game for a first game is absolutely massive. I mean, the 60 scenarios, that's pretty big as well. But there are over 100 different leader skills and personality traits. So, and some of them are negative that you start out with, and as you get experience, you lose those negative traits. You can add positive ones. There's, I think, three levels for many of the traits, if not for all of them. Now, we're just going to kind of pick a random general, and every unit, I believe, has a general attached to it. So, here is our mission briefing. The war in Spain has started. 
General Francisco Franco has risen against the Republican government. We must help General Franco and his nationalist forces against the communist threat. Herr General, besides the nationalist forces, you have a German expeditionary force and an air fleet under your command. Use the air fleet to transport German troops and Spanish veterans from Morocco to Cadiz and capture Meridia and Badajoz. After that, advance towards Toledo and break the siege of Alcazar by defeating the besieging units marked with a golden star. If you see an opportunity, try to capture Madrid. A swift victory would allow Spain to assist us in the wars to come. So we want that swift victory. So we've got, there are new unit types will be available in the near future. The other thing, kind of get at that whole idea of scope and scale, there are apparently close to, if not a little bit more than 600 different unit types in this game. 600, that's a lot of units. So again, ambitious scope and scale to this game. This is big. And I think that's one thing that I can kind of safely say that this game feels like it's an order of magnitude larger and there is a ton of of gameplay in this. So that that's one thing I feel comfortable saying. I've spent about four hours with as I played through this introductory scenario. Actually, I played once, got halfway through, and decided I want to make this video, and then I shot it, but the battle volume was too loud, so I kind of have to shoot it again, unfortunately. But here we can see our map. This is the southern chunk of Spain. Down here on the very tip, if we zoom in, we can see that this here is Gibraltar, the British-held kind of area. We can't advance into that. We've got some of our German forces down here in Morocco, and our goal, if we kind of scan up here, is we've got to come up, move up the map, and take Madrid up here, which is the northeast corner, and then Toledo, which is here. These are the, the objectives with stars on them. Now, if we zoom out a little bit here, you'll notice that these light green areas and the, they're dark green areas. The light green areas are where our troops are, and this simulates the fact that a civil war has broken out. So our forces are all intermingled with the Republican forces. And what we've got to try to do is to save as many of these ones that are isolated or have them cause enough damage before they capitulate and then kind of consolidate here in the south and try to push our, push our forces up to the north. Now, we'll see as we get going here. I'm going to see if we do have any units to deploy here. We do have a gun to deploy, but I'm going to wait on this until we gain control of this airfield in the middle here because if I deploy it now, the only place I can deploy it is down here in the south. So rather than get it down there and then have to wait to fly it up here, I think we're just gonna wait till we get control of that airfield a little bit. So that's uh, we're gonna close that for now and we'll leave those there. Now, a couple things to mention about this game. The designers mentioned that part of the vision behind it, and I think this is a, a kind of another element that's a little different than Panzer General and um, kind of Panzer Corps, uh, this feels like there's a lot more depth to it. Like Panzer Corps, Panzer General often described as kind of beer and pretzels games, right? You're kind of, there's, it's, there's a simplicity to them, although there is a ton of complexity under the hood. This game feels both mechanically and in terms of combat, a, a, a level of complexity higher and a level of complexity deeper than those games. That's neither good nor bad, but it is nice to have something that's going to be different, right? Because we don't want them to be the same as the other games. One of the original design intentions was to make this game a little bit like a halfway between Hearts of Iron and Panzer Corps and Panzer General. I think it's tilted more towards the Panzer General, Panzer Corps area than Hearts of Iron, but you can see some mechanics in here as we'll dig forward and kind of show them as we go on here. So let's uh, get started. We don't have any units to deploy right now. We're not going to deploy that unit. So we're going to hit this lever here to go to the first turn. And here we get our specific objectives. So we've got weather. Weather plays an impact in everything that happens. It is clear and dry today, and the forecast is clear and dry for tomorrow. That is excellent. Now, we have to get, uh, we have 22 turns. So this is interesting. I've played, I've started this. This is, I think, the third time I've started this. And in the first and second time, it was 21 turns for a major victory. Now it's 22, and minor is 28. So there seems to be subtle variations in randomness attached to the scenarios each time you play them. And I noticed that sometimes when I've played it and started it up, for the core units, there were none. For the deployed units, there were none available. Sometimes it's been infantry, and now it was an anti-aircraft or a kind of an artillery unit. So it seems like there's some randomness built in here, and there are events that in can impact things as well, as we see once we click continue here. So we've got 22 turns to get a major victory. 
we have to conquer five objectives, which are basically kind of two cities here on the side and the cities up to the northeast that we'll take a look at. And then special conditions for a major win is that we have to destroy 13 enemy units marked with a star. So we have to get busy kind of wiping these things out. So let's, uh, with that in mind, let's continue on here. And now it is our turn. A rough plan again is going to be try to consolidate here just to the north of Gibraltar. We can see that, oh, I should show you here too, because it's a little bit tricky. Again, everything's kind of mixed up. Our units are the units here that have the red, yellow, and red national flag on, the nationalist flag. The Republican forces that we're fighting against, red, yellow, and purple. It's a little bit tricky to see in this one, I assume, as you get into more of the allied scenarios, that's going to be much more obvious, because the two flags look somewhat similar here, but you know, once you get used to it, it's pretty easy. And again, this is kind of the, the introductory tutorial here. So let's start. Now, one of the things we want to try to do is to get as many of these units up here. And I think we can embark them here by air and have them fly up to this airfield. And then they should disembark. And now we've moved our first infantry units up there. Excellent. Let's see if we can get this artillery unit up there. Can we do that? There are no more planes that can be used. Oh, okay, well, we got one going here. So let's fly this one up here, we'll get this in place. Now, one of the things I think we can talk a little bit about too here is the graphics. Um, you know, I think they're, the developers said that they have not focused on the graphics beyond kind of making them functional and, and elegant. I feel like this is fine. I mean, the zoom and the detail at these levels of zoom seems pretty cool. I'm perfectly fine with, I don't, I don't think we can disembark this guy. We cannot, okay, so we're gonna skip him. I think the graphics are absolutely fine here. So I'm going to move this infantry units closer now here because we want them to get on the planes in the next turn and get transported. And I think we have an air unit down here too. Anything here with air? Yeah, there's an air unit right there. So we're going to send it over here over this against this ship here and see if we can neutralize that. Let's bomb it. All right, a little bit of a hit there. And we'll talk a little bit about some of these numbers as we go forward. So we did lose a strength pawn on that. The basic numbers under the units here, we can see a nine and 10 on this airplane. The left number is its strength. The right number is its state of supply. And that is one of the mechanics. I should show you this, this is cool. So if we click on supply, we can see down here, um, our supply is now centered in red and how this works. So our, we're all our units in this kind of encapsulated red zone are in supply. And this brings up one of the kind of the key elements of the game is that supply follows, by and large, follows supply, uh, railroad lines, which are key, and then it also follows roadways. And you get a certain amount of distance up along and outside of ro roadways. So we can see that a lot of our units down here in the south are getting supplied here out of the city of Algeceras. But as we get further north up here, all of our units up here are not in supply. So one of the things we want to try to do is to see how many of these units we can get back in supply. And of course, enemy units that are on rail lines and railway roadways or cities in there are blocking supply routes. So we really want to try to open up the supply to the north here because one of our first objectives, I think, is going to be to try to get these two cities up here. But anyway, so we've taken care of our movement down here. We've had the ship here neutralize this. We've had our, our aircraft neutralize this ship. So we are in fairly good shape now. I think what we want to try to do here is to take the city of Sevilla as quickly as we can. Now, I do have a couple of comments to make. Um, I'm really enjoying things so far. And again, I've, I've you know, played probably four or five hours now, played this scenario a few times to kind of get a, a handle on some of the base mechanics. I feel like I have a lot still left to learn. There are a couple of user interface elements that I wish were a bit different. And I'll show you, for example, here, if we click on this artillery unit here, on the left-hand side, we can see its combat strength is 10, its uh, defense is three, its scatter, which means um, it's just kind of dispersal and its state of combat readiness can also get deteriorate with attacks and things. And then its supply is a 10, but I can't see its range, right? So the only way I can see its range is if I click over here on the star for unit info, and then it pulls it up, but it covers the unit, which is a little bit of a bummer. And then if I click close, it's gonna zoom out way out and I have to zoom back in. If I escape, I go right back to the unit I was on, which is good. But what I'd really like is to be able to see these more detailed combat numbers about range and stuff like this, with maybe like a little drop down arrow on this. I think that would be really cool. And likewise, if I have this unit open here, all of my other units, this is review army, are on the right hand side. But like if I click one here for the 10th Corps German regular infantry, 
and I can move around the map behind it. You can see that, but I can't really see the unit unless it's kind of like off on the side and I can't really, I, if I click on it, I don't navigate to it unless I click close and then it kind of navigates to it down here, but then I have to zoom in. So I feel like that, that system could be a little bit um, improved over time because in a game like this where you have a ton of units and a lot of turns, that efficiency of moving amongst your units um, is really appreciated. So I know the developers have released a manual since the game released last Wednesday, and I know they're working on a number of different tweaks to the game. So I get a sense that the game is going to see continued development after release. And that is one thing that I, there are a couple places that I'd love to see a little bit of user interface improvements as it goes forward. But anyway, um, this the range of this, if we look at the artillery range here, we can see that it is two. So now we know that the range is two. We're going to escape out of this so it doesn't move. We're going to start bombing the city up here. We're going to move this artillery up and we're going to blast the city of Seville with these nationalist uh, Republican troops in it. On the combat results, we can see the five numbers across the top. I don't know yet what the middle number means. But the left number is the defense, is the number of casualties the defense is expected to take. There's a, a zero slash two. The leftmost number is the loss and strength power it's going to lose. The right number is its scattering. So it's going to suffer kind of dispersion and, and lose its combat readiness. The right two numbers in green in the top right are the effects that we would expect on us. Because this is an artillery attack at distance, we're not expecting to see any losses or any suffer any casualties here. So let's fire. We can see we got a dispersal of two on the unit. That's good. It weakened it a little bit. Now we're going to be a little bit aggressive on this one. Uh, this unit actually can't move. Just, that's a bummer. But we're going to move our infantry down here to the north. And it looks like it's going to be a stalemate two to two, but we're going to take that. And we're going to attack because time is of the essence here. Ugh, so we lost three and they lost one. Our 4th Nationalist Regular Infantry here did not do a good job. We've started off rather lamely. Now, I have noticed when I played this scenario a couple times before that we can kind of draw the Republican forces out of the cities. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's a function yet. I, I'm not sure quite why that's happening because I would think like this unit would want to stay in the city. But I think if we put it here, we're going to be able to draw it out and then weaken it and finish it off. Now, this may be a function of the... I don't want to say too much about it. It could be a function of the tutorial. It could be a function of the AI level that we set. Um, but we'll see what happens as we go forward here. Okay, so we have taken care of our action down here in the south. Let's um, let's come over here. And I think we can man We got how many? In the top right corner here, we can see that we have 220 influence. And influence is basically your money. So we're going to come in here and to manage units. And we're going to see if we can buy some units here. We're going to buy some German regular army. And I think... Our core units are full. I'm not quite sure how to see that yet, but I'm sure there's a way to see it. We're gonna rent them and unit is rented. And then we're gonna, let's do one more here. Let's get some nationalist regular infantry here. We click on that. We're gonna rent them. They're sold out. Let's close now. Let's come in to deploy units. We've got our German regular infantry. We're gonna put them right here. Boom, I'm gonna put our nationalist regular infantry right here. So then I think we can have these two units start our launch, kind of our attacks to the east. My basic plan of attack with this is going to be to have a kind of a core of troops, a unit of troops work their way up along this rail, rail line here that goes up straight on the west side of the map. And then they're going to have a second team kind of launch, go up here, try to clean out these cities in the mountains here, and then drive up to eventually join up with the forces on the west and lead an attack on Toledo and Madrid. That's our rough game plan for this. So we want to get a couple of units in place here that can start to move towards that. I think, can we deploy these units too? We can. So let's deploy uh, headquarter cap, units cap exceeded. Ah, so we can't deploy that unit. Bummer, because we could use some artillery down there, but we'll solve that problem somehow. Okay, so now over here, we're kind of work our way up. We have this unit that's trapped in the cities. So we're going to close this. We have this unit that's trapped in the city. I think we're going to kind of leave it there and let them come at us because I think we're in a good defensive position. I don't want to move out because I think that's not going to be a good idea. Likewise, we have a unit here that's holding the city of... Uh, which city is this? Roldan Menor, perhaps? Interesting. Oh, Cordoba. There, it's in Cordoba. Um, we know we're going to get hit hard by these units. I, I hesitate to give up the city Though we could try to sneak down and get out. We could save this unit, perhaps. 
Yeah, let's see what can happen if we try to kind of get it back into... Because this will get it back into supply as well, too. So we're going to give up that city, move into the hills here. Oh, now we've moved out of supply. Interesting. I don't know why that would happen. Oh, because they own, they've controlled this city. We have to take that city. That makes sense, I guess. All right, so let's come over here. We're going to work our way up to the northeast. We've got this unit up in the hills. We're going to leave them there and make these units come after us. Let's actually retreat a little bit further into the hills. We burned up a unit of supply there. Now, up here in Toledo, we currently hold Toledo, but we are surrounded by, Nash by Republican forces, and there's a ton more coming down at us. So we're going to try... I don't think there's any way we can get them out of here. There's just too many Republican forces in the way. So they are kind of fighting a very brave uh, kind of desperation holding action here. But let's see how many Republican forces we can take down with them. We're going to fire the artillery here on this infantry in the open. Do any damage? Ah, oh, nothing. That's disappointing. Should we attack? We will lose more because they have artillery support defending them. So we're not going to do that. We're going to... Oops, my bad. We're going to kind of just leave them there and let them try to beat on us. We're going to defend as best we can there. Hopefully we can extract a price here. Now, as we come over here, we have some interesting situations. We have this infantry unit here. And one of the things I'd like to do is to see if we can pull them down here from this position in the center of the map down here to try to get to an attack here on Zamaron. Because I think this is a city that we've got enough forces to take especially if we can capture this city quickly and open up supply up here too. So let's start moving them. I think it's going to burn up supply, burn up a unit of supply. We've got to see if we can save them and get them back into supply here. Now, we can likewise try to come in here, see if we can attack this city. First of all, let's move this artillery in the hills up here and see if we can pound this Republican artillery in the woods to the north of the city. Perfect. That's good. We reduced them to 10 Excellent. Now let's have our infantry. Do we want to have them move in and attack? I don't because that artillery is back there. So we're going to push them forward and see if we can attack across the river at that artillery. I don't want to attack yet because yeah, we're going to move them up here into the woods and let them sit there. Now I don't know yet quite what the defensive values are of some of these things. So like a woods better than hills. I'm not really sure yet. Um, I have to take a little bit more time. I'll look at the manual, which again just came out today. We're going to push this a little bit. We own this air base. We've got this infantry here. The first two times I've played kind of the first turns of the scenario, I've had some pretty good luck pushing these kind of attacks. I think maybe because it's the introductory scenario, it's giving us a little bit of an advantage. Let's see what happens here. So we lost two. We're down to eight. They lost three. They're down to seven. So that's good because if we could get lucky here, and this infantry could take this city, that would be awesome. Now, if we scan, I think we've attacked with everything in this first turn. Move those units into the hills here. There is a next active unit, um, but I think that it, it seems to kind of cycle through. I'm not sure if it, like that one we're not gonna do. It, we just kind of keep going back. These we know we're not gonna attack with. There's nothing to attack. So we're gonna kind of do that. I think we're good here. I think we're done with our first turn. So let's hit the lever and move on to turn number two. See what the enemy does. That ship fired at our aircraft. Now they have attacked out of that city. How did that go? Don't know. We'll check on it later. Here comes the attacks on our city here. They're just going to gang up on it. I have seen the AI doing a pretty good job of like, pulling artillery in and pulling infantry in and attacking units um, kind of in coordination, as would be expected. But oof, that infantry is trapped. Oh, it's getting beat down. Down to four. Anything left here? Did we lose them all? Artillery's moving up, firing on our artillery. They come in behind us and attacking the artillery. That makes a lot of sense, actually. That's pretty smart. Now this infantry's attacking us in the city. Lots of fighting going on. Now that's interesting. That artillery moved across the river next to our infantry to fire on our artillery. Our artillery. I'm not sure I would recommend that, but... This is coming out of the city. So we can see we've pulled these units out of the cities. And I'm not quite sure. Tactically, I wouldn't think that would be their best move since they're trapped like that. But again, maybe it's the level of the AI. and Maybe it's the fact that it's just a tutorial. So I don't want to kind of overstate too much about the AI's behavior yet. I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit about that at the end. Okay, let's continue on to turn two. Um, so what's our next steps here? First of all, we want to try to fly up 
as best we can. Let's kind of see. We're, let's see if we get some attacks here, too. So this is 10 on 10. No casualties here. Do we want to... Yeah, we're just going to attack straight up. It looks like we can get a little bit of an advantage here. So let's do it. We'll get a good attack with these units. We get 8 to 7. So we did come out ahead on that one, and we have weakened them considerably. The question here is, do we want our... Do we want to start pushing up here to the northeast? Or do we want to help the unit over here? No, we're going to push northeast here. So we're going to move up here along the rail lines. Now, there is strategic movement in the game. There's also a lot of kind of... Uh, there's tactics and mechanics that I haven't really explored yet that I think they uh, introduce as you go further in the scenarios. Things like strategic bombing. And the developers mentioned that the use of aircraft in the game, there's a lot of different ways you can use it other than just kind of straight up air-to-air -air combat. So that's a kind of an interesting mechanic that I feel like has been elaborated on uh, probably to a greater degree than in kind of Panzer Corps and uh, the Panzer General series here. So let's get our Spanish nationalists up here. We want them to start to, to move here north to on Nogalen. We'd like to take that city at some point soon. We fought down here. That's good. Let's continue our attacks here on these units. They seem to be kind of struggling here, huh? So let's pull our artillery back, and they're going to fire on this unit. All right, so we hit them. They're down to eight. Now let's see if we can really pound them into submission. We've got these new Spanish troops here that have just come up. Let's get them there. River expected of five. What happened? Got them down. So they're down to four and we're at nine. Now let's get these other forces. Why can't... Oh, these are Republican forces. I didn't even see that. That moved down from the city here. Gah! Okay, let's come in here. And we're down to seven. Let's see if we can finish them off. We got them trapped in the riverbed there. Uh, let's kill him off. Ah, there's one left. Figures. All right, so we're down to six. They're down to nine. It's getting interesting. Can we move them? We can. We can move them here. Because I want to drop... But that's going to drop our artillery right next to this infantry. Oh, wait. Can we unload them here? Let's see if that'll work. Can we disembark? We can. Oh, these got paratroops. Huh, interesting. <laughs> I'm not, I, so we did paratroop the artillery? Did we drop the... That's cool. I'm not quite sure how that works, but we can't fire because we just deployed here. Let's see now if we can get these other infantry units to dip, kind of disembark. Do we have anything here? Yes, we do. Airplanes. Let's go get up here. Can't land there. We can go here. Why can't we fly there? Let's go, guys. That there... We go there. That's fine. Oh, and we can drop them by parachute. And this is infantry, which is good. So let's drop them right here. Perfect. Nice. So we got this unit surrounded. And we should have supply coming up here pretty soon. Once we take this unit out. Now let's bring up another unit here. I'm going to see if we can fly these guys up, get more Germans up. There are no more transport planes that can be used, but we've got them and two airplanes. Let's bring them here. Can we drop them then, too? Nice. This is great. I want one more to drop here because I want this German infantry to come down here and support this attack. So, excellent. So, we've got more units come up, come up here. Can we get this one to fly? I don't think there's any more, right? Wait, wait. Oh, there is. Okay. Interesting. So let's have them come up here. Can we drop them then? We can. Awesome. Okay, so we have a whole cadre of forces now that have been moved out of Morocco up to the area just outside here of Sevilla that we can use in our offensive, which is excellent. I want to slide some of this artillery over here to help these troops because we're going to need more forces over here in the east too. But I think that takes care of everything here. We've severely damaged one Republican infantry unit. We've got another fresh one down in here, but we do have them somewhat surrounded and cut off. Although it's kind of showing our units are struggling for supply too. But I think we're going to be in better shape than they are there. Now over here, anything that we can do here, our units have escaped into the mountains. That's fine. Let's have them push back can we go around here, maybe? Can we do that? We can't go there. That one can't go there. I'm not sure. I think maybe that's too rugged. Let's go up in here and make them chase us all around. Kind of drag them out of line here. This infantry unit's down to a strength of one. But we can capture this city here. 
Lucena, I think. Yes, excellent. And that helps a little bit, although they're going to die, right? Their, their strength is only one, so I don't think they can do anything here. Now up here, what have we got? Anything left? This is the unit that went into the mountains. Nothing came after them, interestingly. Maybe we'll just have them hang out there for a while until we can perhaps relieve them. Hope they can find berries in the woods and the mountains and the hills north of, in the northern part of Spain here. Now, our units here are taking a beating. We can fire on this infantry here. We can put some more damage on that. Let's hit this artillery, though. All right, can we beat it down a little bit? Nothing. You guys failed. Let's move up into the mountains, though. Just drag this unit around here. We can attack this artillery. That would be good. Oh, they fired on us. We took it down to five, which is good. I'm just hoping they can do damage before they die, right? Because that takes care of everything up here in the northwest. Let's see if we can attack here. Now, they're down to two. Oh, so they must have attacked us and failed miserably. This should allow our fifth Republican, um, our, what is it, the 11th Nationalist regulars here to take this city, I think. We beat them up. Yes, excellent. So let's move into the city. And we have captured the city of Narajo. Is that it? And that's, it's not going to help our supply situation. They're still desperately out of supply, but hopefully they can hold that position until we can open up this rail line, which does mean we're going to have to come over here and to retake these cities a little bit. It's going to be a kind of a strong battle over here, but I think we have forces that can do this now. Excellent. Let's see what we can do down here in the city of Zamaron. I'm going to bring this infantry down. Let's have them move into the hills a little bit. That's fine. We could conceivably take this city too. Let's have... Now this artillery, that's a dubious move there, I think. We're going to have our, our artillery pound their artillery. Just going to get it started to its destruction. And then we're going to leave our artillery there. That's good. We're going to have our infantry come after it, going right after the artillery. That should... It does. It wipes it out, which is good. See if we can pull this unit out a little bit, perhaps. So we're going to leave them there in the hills outside of the town here. Let's have this infantry. I don't know if woods and hills. We're going to attack. It looks like it's to our favor a little bit. We're going to push the attack on. So oh, six to five. Okay. Not the best result, but we'll take it. It's going to be tough. Oh, we could slide this way, perhaps getting this city. And that's a source of supply for us, perhaps. That could be a bold move they've left that open a little bit. All right, let's come down now. We've taken care of everything here. I think right, we don't have anything that can attack down here. Now we can see in the center here, there's a target crosshairs and then there's an arrow. If that's green, the unit can move. If it's got a green crosshair, if it's green, the unit can move or fire. So if the crosshairs are green, you can fire. If the arrow is green, you can move. Um, we can't do either with most of this one's moved, but it's kind of trapped in it. Oh, it could move somewhere. But I think we want to leave it there because I don't want them to move forward and attack our artillery. So we're just going to leave that where it is. They could move, but I kind of want them where they are. These guys have all moved and they don't have anything to attack. Oh, we're going to see if we can finish off this ship here. Attack it. Get that. Uh, can we move we Move now? Can we move back here? Nope. It's all moved and attack. I can't quite see what happened. Can we shift to ground? Can't see the strength of that, but it looks like it's... It looks like it's in trouble, right? It's got a burning little icon there and some other red markers. I assume red is bad. One of the things that I know the designer said is that ships can take specific types of damage. Um, and I, I don't know the extent of that, but I did see something referring like hull damage and things like that. But I don't know how, can we hover over it? See it? I can't quite. So I don't quite know how we would see that specific damage. I don't know what those icons mean yet, but let's go back to the air. And I think with that, we have 338 influence, but I don't think we can buy, I don't think we can place any more units down. Can we deploy this unit? Yep, headquarter units cap exceeded. So we can't play, oh, that was headquarter units though. Headquarter units I think are our core units. So maybe we can buy something? We've got 338 influence. Could we buy some artillery perhaps? And rent it basically. So what about some of these 7.5 centimeter artillery guns? Let's rent these. Close. What did that cost us? Uh, it might have cost us a lot. Yeah, no, about 100 or so. Now let's see. Can we deploy them? Will that work? Headquarter units cap exceeded. So yeah, I think we're, we're done with, um, with that. And, I, and I, I, there must be a way to see 
our core and kind of what we can use and stuff like that. But I, I don't know how to do that quite yet. We're going to play one more turn and they're going to offer some kind of thoughts up here too. This is getting interesting though. So let's hit this lever to end the turn. Oh, they took this. Yeah, we kind of expected that to happen. The ship is trying to pound our aircraft. They are trying to take on our infantry. Hopefully we can beat them up. Ah! Oh, interesting. So they left the city there. They're trying to get the supply route. All kinds of crazy stuff. Here come the units down out of Madrid to attack our units in the city. They are going to get badly beat up. Oh, I shouldn't have moved our artillery away because they can't defend the position now. That was dumb, right? You always want your artillery right behind your units so they provide defensive fire. That cost us that unit. So they're coming after our units and attacking here. Now I notice in this scenario, I think it's coded not to do this perhaps for the introductory scenarios. They, they're not taking the towns and things like that. So okay, there's our victory conditions, still working on that. An unpredicted event, available supply changed. Available supply is increased by one. Nice, so there's a lot of little random events in here. There's a lot of little subtle touches that I think create some variability in these battles, which is kind of fun. And I don't know if that means all of our units got one more supply or we can get one more unit. So I still have quite a bit to learn about the game, as you can see. But let's uh, let's move forward here now. Let's start with this. This is simple. We're going to have this aircraft try to finish off this ship here. Did you get it? Ah, nope, didn't sink it yet. But we're chasing it around. And did they leave? Did they move out? Did they abandon it? Looks like they did. So we want to take this. Excellent. That gives us another city. Let's have our nationalist forces start to push up here into the hills. So we're heading up now. We've captured, which one is this? Malaga. And we're ha captured heading up here towards Lucena. Do we have that? Our unit got defeated. A lot of forces up here. That's going to be tough to do. And we've got to kind of consider how we're going to get into Granada here inside the mountains. It looks like a beautiful city, by the way, kind of based in the mountains there. We're we've lost quite a few of our units up here now, haven't we? Now, these guys are hanging out in the woods. They're losing a unit of supply every turn, but we're just going to have them hopefully last for as long as they can. Um, this artillery is, I think we're going to move it. I bet if we move it behind, this infantry comes around it and attacks it, but let's, they're going to lose anyway. There's only two strength left. Let's have them see if we can get any damage on that artillery. Any luck? Nope. A little bit of dispersal, but we're going to actually have them run away. Let's come back in here. This unit here. Let's see if we can pull some of these units away. We'll give up the town and see if they come down here. Okay, so that's kind of the northeastern part here. Now let's go over here. We've captured this town, but they are out of supply down to six. So we're going to kind of leave them where they are for right now. Close that airfield little marker. Now down here, we have... This is an interesting situation, right? Because I think... We can push this unit into this city. Can we take it? Can we resupply? We can't resupply it because it's out of supply. But will that actually give us a supply element here? Does that change the supply if we click away now? Because that's listed as a supply sport. So there's a big supply drum there. But apparently, it doesn't look like it. It looks like we have to continue and hook up these units to the south and stuff too. But anyway, that is a very badly beat up unit. Let's have... So I'm going to think for a second here, because we've got a couple of decisions to make with this infantry, with this artillery and stuff like that, what we want to do. All right, so we're going to have this infantry. I was thinking to take whether we want to take this city or this city in the south. We're going to have them come down and take this city, cut off the units behind them. That will open up another pathway on the railhead. And I think as a desperation move, we can have this unit, as it runs out of supply, try to come down by the rail line here and take this city here, which would give us all of those. That would potentially leave them vulnerable something coming out of this city and attacking us, but I'm not sure how aggressive the AI is going to be at this level for this initial campaign. So we might take a little bit of risks there. We're going to bring our infantry over here. Get ready to... Oh, we can catch them in the river. That looks like a promising attack. Now, if we bring our artillery over, they still can't attack because they're out of range. Both of our units here can attack pretty mercilessly on this unit. Let's do it. We got a good luck. It's 10 10. What do we end up with? 8 7. Ah, we didn't perform very well. But now we have our second unit coming down here 10th Nationalist Regulars. We come down to 4 7. So we've created some pretty significant casualties on these two units. Be interesting to see what they do next turn. Will they go after this weakened unit? That's one. We've managed to take two cities, which are both of our objectives. 
And if we can break these two nationalist cities here, we'll have the rail line for supply open all the way up here to the northern cities, which would be outstanding. That would really give us the western half of the map fairly quickly here. However, we still have work to do. Now comes this big mess here, and it's... Okay, so we can attack there and perhaps finish this off. We want to use our artillery. We want to finish these guys off. So let's have this artillery fire down here and disperse them a little bit. All right, so that takes care of that. Now we're going to have this infantry attack here. Give us some success. How do we do? Seven to four. Okay, so we're weakening things there. Now we have two nationalist forces in, uh, two Republican forces in here. This one's a one. We definitely want to finish them off. They've been reduced to three, and we cannot reinforce them because they are out of supply. But I think we can do some pounding here. Let's have our artillery fire up on this stronger unit. Okay, that's doing, do any do any damage there? Still eight, but hopefully disperse them a little bit. Now let's have this strong German infantry unit. We're going to finish off this unit here. Act, yeah, let's do that. That's going to work. Let's finish them off. That should take them out. Excellent. That finishes them off. And I think actually we're going to move them straight here to the west because I want to capture this city. It's undefended. Good. Okay, so now we're going to have our German infantry attack this infantry in the open. Hopefully that's a strong attack. Down to four and no casualties suffered. Outstanding. And I think we can have them push up this way towards this city here, because that will give us that rail line too. Now let's have this infantry move forward, attack here. Can we finish them off? Excellent. That was a good attack. Now the, they might be in supply. No, they're not yet. I guess it takes a while. Maybe it takes a little bit for the supply to register. Um, I'm not sure. Or maybe because the rail lines cut here, we're not in supply. I mean, again, I'm kind of still figuring out things a little bit here. Okay, so that was good. Got them, they're all taken care of. Yeah, I think we've done everything for this turn. Um, so I thought now what I'd like to do is offer some observations on gameplay so far. Um, first up, I love the scope and scale. I love the depth of units. We haven't touched on a lot of things yet, like leadership skills. Like if we click here now on this, let's click here and take a look at our um, info unit here. We can see like this, for example, Canon, it has a uh, promotion, so this, and it's, it's gone up to level two now with 57 experience. So there's a whole upgrading system in here. And we'll take a look at that at the next episode. I think what I'm going to do is most of our units actually here have received kind of promotion upgrades. So we'll look at that in the next episode, how we kind of handle with that. And again, still things I'm kind of figuring out. But there's all kinds of leveling up of units with experience points as are familiar with kind of uh, the other scenarios in um, this type of game in terms of Panzer Corps and Panzer General. But I thought I would offer some initial impressions. One, I really like the scope and scale. This feels massive for a first game by a first right, by, a, by an independent studio. And I, I think this game was in development for over four years. It shows. There is a ton here. I am fine with the graphics. They work. You're not... This isn't a type of game that you play for... You don't play it for the graphics, right? You play it for the challenge. And as long as the graphics are functional, I feel like these are very clean, very easy to understand and interpret graphics. I like them. Super happy with that level there. Um, the user interface elements I mentioned, I feel like th that could be improved a little bit. Like I don't know if there's a, a keystroke to pull up this uh, unit info. I know there's a keystroke for Embark, but I tried it. I can't quite get it to work yet, so I might be missing something there. So I feel like there's still some tweaking and some refinement of the user interface to make the game flow kind of um, proceed a little bit smoother as you go forward. So I think that would be something that could be done. Um, things I don't know. I think I'd like to just kind of talk for a minute or so about this type of game and the things that we can't speak about yet because we just haven't played enough. Um, in a game like this where you've got interlinked scenarios, that scenario balance is really important because if you've got one or two or a handful of scenarios that are just out of balance, that especially if they're just too hard, then you get stuck and you can't proceed in the campaign. So we can't say anything about that because you kind of have to, I feel like this, I mean, there's probably in this campaign scenario, you're looking at 60 to 100 hours to play through this campaign, right? Because if you got 60 scenarios, I'm assuming you'd probably play like 20 to 30 in one campaign, considering you're going to be going in all different directions. And each one's probably going to take about two to three hours to play, given their size and stuff like that. So I feel like a campaign 
maybe fast is like 40 hours, but it's probably closer to like 60, maybe 80, depending on how things go. And you're thinking in between scenarios and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you can't until you play through it a few times and go through the scenarios. It's really hard to see if that situation exists. The AI is a question mark, and I don't think we can say anything about it yet. It's made some good decisions here. Um, I would it probably made some questionable decisions, but this is the first tutorial. So it might very well be hard coded to make these types of things. And I noticed like it hasn't taken our cities. Well, I'm sh I'm sure that as we progress in the campaign, the AI is going to take our city. So I feel like this is not fair to judge the AI on this tutorial scenario, especially the very first one. I think it's trying to make it easy for us. So I don't think we can say anything about it there. But obviously in a game like this, you want um, you want an AI that, it, I mean, ruthless at the higher levels is probably what you're looking for. But even at kind of the middle to higher levels, you're looking for a believable AI that's going to give you a challenge, especially as you, you learn the systems and things like that. So um, that's something I don't think we can say anything about at this point in the game until we played quite a bit more. Um, the other things I'm curious about that I don't think we can say left is 600 units in a game is pretty impressive. How that works as you play through, like you're always trying to gravitate towards the same subset of like 50 units or so, um, or are you know is there kind of a sequence where you can see a lot of these different units coming into play and you can use them because it makes sense to use them there. Likewise with the hundred skills, you know, is there a subset of skills that are kind of higher powered? Uh, as compared to others, and you're always going to try to divide, design a commander to do that. The way the skills are set up, it looks like to me that they're set up so you can build kind of defensive commanders and more aggressive risk-taking commanders and just kind of tactically astute commanders. So it looks like you've got a number of different development paths for commander skill traits and sets that you can put together that might have some really cool synergies to them. Um, and we'll take a look a little bit at some of those skills as we get into the next episode. So those are a ton of question marks that I have about the game so far that you just, we can't say anything about it right now. But big thing, too long, didn't read, stand back observation is, I'm having a ton of fun playing this. I love the scope and scale. I love the fact that we've got a game in this genre that looks a little bit more, kind of a level of depth beyond existing games in the genre. So I'm really excited to see how the campaign goes through and how we play forward a little bit more. Now I think going forward, I'm gonna come back. What I might do is play forward a little bit in this tutorial and come back in a few more turns because I think playing through the whole thing would take quite, a, take quite a bit of time on camera. But we're going to come back and take another look at this scenario, look at some of the other features and offer some more observations, and then probably move on to kind of another two or three games in this tutorial so that people get an idea a little bit more how the gameplay evolves. And I assume that in the next tutorial-esque scenarios, they're going to introduce some of the other mechanics like strategic bombing and stuff like that, maybe naval combat and things too. A little bit more uses for aircraft because I know that's a fairly complex mechanic in this game too. So we'll kind of take a look at those, hoping to look to probably make like three to five videos in all so that when this little mini series is done, people who are interested in the game will have a pretty good idea of what it's involved and whether it's something you would enjoy. But yeah, I, I mean, I love these games. If you've seen the Panzer Corps series, on the channel before that we got about halfway through an allied panzer corps series um, i love these types of games i love the ideas that you're building up your units and strengthening them they get experience there's kind of that role playing element to it the tactical challenges are really fun the sense of history and to be able to delve into that hypothetical i feel like this game ticks off all the boxes and i really like the supply mechanic and the way it's working out in here i feel like this is um, this is pretty cool. And I have a lot to learn is obviously, as you can tell, I've got a lot of questions I'm playing, but super excited for seeing how this goes. A very kind of initial thumbs up to this. Um, pretty excited about what we're, what I'm seeing so far. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, very shortly, we should have episode two up, which you can click on and watch here. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.